Okay, open to you. Who wants the first question? <laughs> question, do you think the U.S. will attack Iran? I think there's, you know, I don't sit in the Oval Office, obviously, but uh, there's pretty good evidence, I think, that the Pentagon is strongly against it, uh, that the U.S. intelligence, to the extent that we know anything, is opposed to it. Uh, and it's a fact it's hard to find anyone in favor of it, except uh, that planning happens to be in the hands of an extremely small, uh, unusually autocratic group of people. There's a, a kind of a, don't like to use the word, but a sort of a quasi-fascist element in the administration. They want top, tight control of planning in every respect, uh, secrecy, uh, uh, authoritarian control, and so on. And it's really up to uh, Cheney, uh, Rumsfeld, uh, Rice, uh, maybe two or three other people. They might decide to do it. Uh, I suspect if they do, uh, the reason will be that they have created such a catastrophe in Iraq. Uh, they've created a situation where they can't stay in, they can't get out. And they might just decide that, uh, almost as an act of desperation, to uh, just hit the whole system with a sledgehammer and see what happens. You know, that's, uh, I mean, a, uh, you know, a man-eating tiger in your backyard is... Uh, dangerous, but a wounded man-eating tiger in your backyard is a lot more dangerous. And I think that's what we're facing. So I can't predict. Let, let me get you to something less political. Uh, what do you think about global warming? What do you think about the need to use less oil? And what do you think this is going to do Yes, to global politics. Well, uh, there's a just overwhelming scientific consensus, uh, not only that global warming is taking place, but that uh, human uh, intervention is accelerating it. And there's also an overwhelming consensus that it could be catastrophic. I mean, it's what's called a nonlinear process. You know, it can reach, uh, it can increase, and then come to a point where it just has radically different effects, possibly catastrophic effects. Uh, there's debates around the, you know, around the edges, but the consensus is real. Uh, and uh, there's no doubt that uh, the use of uh, hydrocarbons ac accelerates it significantly. And yes, uh, there should be a very concerted effort to follow the near unanimous advice of the international scientific community and uh, change move significantly towards conservation, towards renewable fuels, towards uh, modifying um, social and economic arrangements uh, so as to uh, reduce the, uh, f um, the intensity of the focus on hydrocarbons. And remember, a lot of this is just social engineering, and it's not an economic necessity. So probably the, m the most extraordinary uh, social engineering project maybe in history uh, took place in the United States in the late 40s and 1950s uh, to try to uh, destroy the eff quite efficient uh, electrical transportation system and uh, replace it by, uh, and uh, tra uh, trains, you know, I don't have to tell you, the U.S. has one of the worst rail systems in the industrial world, and that's all planned. It was planned very carefully, uh, uh, and it, uh, to try the effort to shift the economy to reliance on uh, oil, uh, automobiles, trucks, uh, airplanes, and so on, hydrocarbon consuming economy, that led to uh, big social effects. It led to suburbanization of the country, to destruction of the inner cities, uh, all kinds of social and cultural changes. And uh, that's not uh, graven in stone. You know, the social engineering projects can be reversed. Now, this was a combination of state and corporate planning. In fact, it was literally a conspiracy. Literally. It went to the courts uh, and they charged uh, General Motors, Firestone Rubber, and Standard Oil of California with conspiracy and destroying the Los Angeles uh, uh, 
public transportation system to try to shift it to uh, oil and uh, cars and so on. I think they, they were actually fined, if I recall, I think they were fined $5,000, uh, just about enough to pay for the victory dinner uh, afterwards. But, uh, and then the government came in with the National Defense uh, Highway Act. Uh, defense has to be put in any legislation to pass it. Uh, pretext was you have to move missiles around the country or something like that, and uh, so on. Then it went down to state and local levels, which uh, um, ex extended the same planning. Well, you know, all of that can be reversed. It's state corporate planning, which uh, can be tur can be turned into a sane direction. And the American population is very strongly in favor of it. So, for example, take, say, the Kyoto Protocols. It's not everything, but it's a small step. Uh, the population is very strongly in support of them. In fact, so strongly in support that a majority of Bush voters thought that he supported them. Uh, because it's such an obvious thing to support, they thought, well, you know, Bush must support it, which tells you something about how American democracy functions. But uh, uh, there's no doubt that there's a public support, fair degree of public understanding, and it just has to be done, not only here, but everywhere or the results could be uh, extremely dangerous. What has, to be done? what has to be done? Cut. Is it going to impact now? If, if this really happens, if we reverse this, then how do you see that this changes our whole political system? Well, I don't think it has to change the political system. I mean, it has to change the political system to become more democratic, but that's for a lot of reasons, so that public opinion enters into public policy. Right now, there's an enormous gulf between public opinion and public policy on a whole range of issues, including this. How to happen, everybody knows. Uh, you have to institute uh, uh, energy-saving um, uh, devices, which are many of which are already available and can there'll be more with further research. Uh, conservation is a major f uh, part of it. And uh, shifting of uh, general lifestyle so, uh, as to uh, reduce reliance on excessive energy consumption. I mean, this, you know, it's, it's not a law of nature that you have to sit in uh, New York uh, tr gridlock in New York City in your uh, Hummer or an SUV. You know, that's, uh, those are social and economic policies, and they could be made different. Mr. Uh, will, that, will that solve the problem? Well, no one knows. It's possible that we're past a tipping point where nothing much can, you know, where maybe you can't stop a serious catastrophe. But one thing is certain, the longer you wait, uh, the less you do, the worse it's going to be. And methods are understood. It's, they're not great secrets.